Aha! I found it. I found it. This is it. This is it. All right. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about one skill that's actually allowed me to go from 35K to 70K to 140. And now, okay, so I'm not at 280, but it's, but this skill has allowed me to double my income over and over again. And I know it can help you and pretty much anyone in the professional world. Okay, now before I get into it, I do have to provide some, some context because if you're just getting into the professional world, there are some very important things that you need to know about how people are paid. Let's talk about two big lessons. And I'm gonna call these lessons um, hacking American white collar salaries or hawks. <laughs> Once you understand these couple lessons, then you can understand what this skill is. It will give you the opportunity to double your income multiple times over. So let's just get into it. Welcome to Hawks Lesson 1. Lesson 1 is all about pay bands. When you get your first professional job, you would think that it pays X dollars an hour. It pays this salary. But that's not entirely true. HR at that company will have what they call pay bands there'll be a range in which they can pay you. So I'm a software engineer, so I'm gonna talk in software engineer positions, but you can trade these out to any typical white collar position and it still applies. Let's look at three roles. Let's look at a junior software engineer, a software engineer or mid-level, and then we have senior. Uh, I'm gonna need some more space, so I'm gonna do some magic editing. There we go. If we look at the junior software engineer level, we notice that, uh, the pay band, the range of money that they pay, is anywhere between 70K a year to 100K a year. And if we look at mid-level, 110 to 150. If we look at senior, 160 to 220. These are just ranges. This is called a pay, pay band. Now looking at that, one of the obvious things that you're really curious about is that you want to be to the top of the range. Let's just look at mid-level, the 110 to 150. Okay, so for the rest of this lesson, let's just focus on two people. Let's, let's think about Bluey. Bluey has been working at the company for five years and has worked at multiple places around the company and knows the business very well. And then we have Bingo. Bingo also has five years of experience, but has been through three different positions over the past uh, five years and has only been at the company for about six months. If we talk about Bluey and Bingo, you might think that because they have the same amount of experience, they would be paid the same. You would be wrong. And it has nothing to do with the skills. Now, let me, let me tell you this. Skills have some influence on where you land in the pay band, but most of it is circumstance. What happens to get them into that position? If we look at Bingo's salary, Bingo is getting paid $140,000 a year. But if we look at Bluey, who has been at the company is getting paid 125. Now, is Bingo more skilled than Bluey? No. But then why does Bingo get paid more? That's what I'm going to talk about in lesson two. But out of this lesson, I hope that everyone understands that every position gets paid a range, and where you land on that range doesn't necessarily mean you are more skilled than the other person. It's just how you came to land in that range in the first place. Welcome to Hawks Level 2. I'm going to call this lesson Compensation Moments. It's a dumb name, but you'll understand what I'm talking about pretty soon. First of all, if we want to maximize how much we make over our long career, maybe like 30-year career, we, have, we want to know when can we make more money. When we can make more money really boils down to four different areas. It's yearly raises. It's uh, promotions. Um, switching companies, job hopping or like finding a new role, or moonlighting or freelancing. Now, I organize these in least effective to most effective, but we need to focus on these key moments. So why am I putting so much emphasis on these key moments is because if we look at this timeline again, the timeline of your career, there is only a handful of chances of critical opportunities for you to increase how much you're able to make. When we look at a raise, that happens once a year, and more often than not, you have to argue your case of why you can get a 3 to 5% raise, and that only covers inflation. So that's not really going to make 
a huge bump in your overall compensation. These next steps are promotions. We look at the timeline, those happen maybe three to five years. Every once in a while, you'll, you can get a promotion. These are good chances to jump into another pay band. And then we have switching companies. Now, when you switch companies into another role, sometimes that becomes a promotion or a lateral move, but that is an opportunity. When you enter the market and then come back into another job, you have a chance to match the market rate. So you can even be doing the same job for company A, but when you jump ship, and go to company B, you could find yourself making like $20,000 more just because their pay ban is better than what you had before. And what I found is like the most effective way to bring in more income is the, the moonlighting or freelancing. Now I say this because when you are trying really hard for a raise or a promotion, if you look at the end of the day, if you got that promotion and that promotion got you seven to $10,000 a year more, you will have more responsibilities, but at the same time, you may find another opportunity to moonlight or freelance in the evenings or weekends to make that same amount of money, but not have the extra responsibilities. All right, so those are the two like basic lessons for understanding how you can increase your income. And this is where the key skill comes into play. We have to focus on this timeline of your career and notice that there's only a few key spots that you have to knock it out of the park in order to make sure that your income makes a big jump because that has a ripple effect throughout the rest of your career. So the question you should ask yourself is, how can I be the most prepared and the most successful at these key moments in my career? And yes, I'm finally gonna tell you what the basic skill you need. All right, now we've come full circle and to me talking about what the basic skill is to be able to double your income. And it comes down to just this, and it is, write stuff down. Now, if I started the video saying, you just need to write stuff down, you're gonna think I'm a complete idiot. But let me talk about this. So when we were talking about the different moments for you to be able to increase your income, when it comes from raises, promotions, job hopping, and freelance work, to make the most out of those moments, you gotta be prepared. Okay, so let's go through all these compensation changes moments and talk about each one and how this is gonna help you. First off, let's look at raises and promotions. Okay, so here's a truth bomb. Your manager doesn't care about you. Not necessarily they don't care, but as a manager, you're not the only subordinate. If you have a manager, they probably have maybe six people total, six to 10 people that work underneath them. So even if your manager was paying attention to all of the people working underneath them, you only have this small sliver of attention. So your manager actually doesn't know what you're doing. I'm sorry, but it's true. So what I'm asking people to do is everyone needs a work journal. And every day I want you just to write down something you did. This doesn't have to be a crazy thing where you have to write a graph or write a paragraph every single day. Just write something down. Getting into this habit, you'll eventually write down the important things throughout your whole career. Any project you're working on, anything you improved, you can write it down. I don't just have everything in a notebook. I have it on a Google Drive so that I can search through it. You can write down links to very important documents that you need. You can write down people's names, their numbers, and something about them so that you can remember when you work with them in the future. And the most important thing you need to write down is things that you're supposed to do well in your job because when it comes time to look for a promotion or a raise, your boss doesn't really know what you've been doing for the past six months. So if you have a list, if you have a work log that you can look back and say, I did X, Y, and Z, I saved the company money, you're gonna be the manager's favorite employee. That gives them one less thing to worry about because a manager is trying to work on the people underneath them and also work on their own career and their own stuff. Like They barely remember anything. So if you come to them and say, hey, I know it's review time, here's a list of all of my accomplishments. This is when I did them and this was the outcome. You're gonna have the best chance for that raise or that promotion when you have that information at your disposal for the promotion or the raise. And so for the other category of job hopping or finding a new job, it's kind of the same story. But at least this way, when you have a work log of all the accomplishments you have for your previous job, when you are interviewing for a new job and they ask you questions of like, well, what have you done uh, to satisfy this requirement of the job? You have a list. 
you have a distinct list of everything you've done. And hopefully when you write stuff down, you can also write down things you learned or things that you would do better. And guess what? That's exactly, exactly what employers want to hear when they're interviewing you for a position that requires that skill. And if we go into the last category, this has helped me in the past, is writing down people's names, what their skill sets are, what kind of jobs they have. It can help you find work outside of work. So if you want to do moonlighting or freelancing, you have more of a chance to remember things that you write down and people that you write down. So that's a summary of my video. Honestly, it is all about just writing stuff down. And so that prepares you for these very critical moments in your career to explain and argue and negotiate your case for getting the most compensation for the job that we all know that you can do. I mean, you still gotta do the job, but when you are able to enter the pay ban at the best possible spot, that's gonna have a ripple effect and have you literally be able to double your income multiple times throughout your career. I really hope this information was helpful. And obviously, if you like this content and you've made it this far, put a talk down into the comments and hopefully I can help as many people as I can entering into the world of software engineering or just entering into the workforce in the first place. It's hard, it's tough, especially in 2023, but stick around. Thank you for watching. You guys have a good night.